Sadakaya Chaksu Unmilitam Yena Tas Mai Shri Udave Namaha Nama Om Vishnu Padaya Krishna Prasnaya Vitale Shri Makti Bhakti Vedanta Swami Kimi Namaste Sarus Bhakti Deve Lodavani Pacharine Nir Vishesha Sunyavari Pasyat Yade Satarine Panchakopa Tarubisja Ripa Sindhu Devaja Ditanam Bhavane Vyo Vaishnave Vyo Namaho Namaha Jai Si Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Shri Advaita Gadadhar Srivasadi Gaur Bhakta Rindam Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. <coughs> Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. So um, before I begin, I just need to do one thing that'll take less than one minute and I'll return soon. Sure. <sighs> Hare, Hare Krishna. <clears throat> so for the two sessions, we've been talking about health. I thought it would be a topic that might be of interest and more than interest, but maybe a topic that might be quite, could be helpful for some people in helping them in general health and in also in uh, overall spiritual practice. We spoke the first day about some of the general principles and make up health, along with quotes from Srila Prabhupada, who quoted quite often on different things to help to improve our health, foodstuffs that were quite unique in curing various types of illnesses. And um, we spoke yesterday a little bit more about the same subject along with some of the principles or some of the <clears throat> tips that we could use to improve our quality of resting. Mm -hmm. Resting helps to rejuvenate the body. It is necessary for uh, cellular rejuvenation and overall rejuvenation. 
sometimes we say that when you get sick, it doesn't really matter so much about what is the cause of your sickness. If you fast and you rest, you put yourself in a very good position for getting cured very quickly. Fasting and resting are some of the best remedies <clears throat> for health, uh, for improving health once one health has gone down. I wanted to speak a little bit about a routine that is more geared to our spiritual practice because spiritual health is also material health. We should not make that complete division where we have the material body and then we have the soul. <clears throat> because our spiritual strength also nourishes our material body. And there are examples where people who there is one man, I have the article somewhere in my files. This one man, he hadn't eaten or drank any water for more than 40 years. Gave up food and water for 40 years. He was quite healthy. You might ask, well, how? <laughs> because of his spiritual practice and of course also because of his uh, knowledge of how the body works, both combined. Um, yogis, some yogis can live just on milk alone. Of course, that also is influenced by environment. If the environment is conducive to less and less material uh, needs, then uh, that also allows for the spiritual energy to develop even uh, more stronger within our minds and in, and in the bodies also. <clears throat> the spiritual, actually, there is a statement <clears throat> and it's actually corroborated that uh, food nourishes the body, the soul energizes the body. <clears throat> In other words, when the soul is strong, or when our Krishna consciousness is strong, we're receiving energy from the spiritual realm <clears throat> directly into the soul. And because the soul is in the body, the body also gets the benefit of it, the body becomes uh, energized as the soul becomes more and more enlivened in the process of devotion to Krishna. We've had experiences that when if we're tired or for a week, if we simply chant Hare Krishna, we can have, we can feel the energy in our body returning simply by the process of chanting. When the chanting is done nicely, if it's not done nicely, then it may not work in that way. Um, I said, my talk will begin with the beginning of the day. When we uh, arise from our sleep, uh, if we sleep in a bed or even if we sleep on the floor, on a mattress or anything, well, as soon as you wake up, you should immediately chant Hare Krishna or something spiritual. Jai Srila Prabhupada or Jai Sri Sri Radha Gokulananda, Jai Sri Sri Radha Giri Govardhan Dari. Something spiritual, as soon as you wake up, as soon as your consciousness connects with the external environment, then getting out of bed, it's recommended you put your right foot on the floor first, not your left foot. 
this brings about auspiciousness in the beginning of the day. And that's also mentioned in Shastra, putting your right foot first onto the floor. And then, of course, uh, we pay our obeisances. And we pay our obeisances to Srila Prabhupada, to our spiritual master. And we can also pay our obeisances to the deity, who is our istadev, our worshipful deity. It may be our home deity, or maybe the temple deity, which we worship. That's a nice way to start. Your mind is already connected. Now we have to go through the process of um, getting ready for the day's activities. That means we have to cleanse ourselves from the sleep. Um, I'll read something. I don't have it with me right in the immediate area, but I can get it in a minute and bring it right back. So this, what I'm about to read is from the Pancharatrika Pradipa 1.6. It's called Taking a Bath. <laughs> Benefits of an early morning bath. It's short. The scriptures describe the benefits of taking a cold bath early in the morning. Such a bath can purify even of a sinner, for it has the power to wash away all external and internal contaminations. Whereas warm water bath cleanses physically, cold water revitalizes the subtle body, removing the influence of sleep and dreams, as well as of evil-minded persons. The cold bath also gives strength, sensitivity, longevity, effulgence, and purity. Taking an early morning cold bath increases one's knowledge and determination and affords peace of mind. It removes unhappiness, lamentation, degradation, and bad thoughts. In short, it counteracts all the ill effects of sin. At night, the nine holes of the body become filled with waste products, which are continuously produced. The early morning bath most effectively removes all of this dirt so that the body can begin its activities in a fresh state. In this way, the early morning bath has positive physical, mental, and spiritual effects and is therefore highly glorified in the scriptures. <laughs> As we know, the most important part of our day is the early morning hours for preparing our consciousness in devotion. So after waking up, we should, uh, the first thing we should do is make sure we cleanse our tongue. We have what is called these tongue scrapers, <laughs> the ama, these uh, uh, Bacteria build up in different places on the body, especially in the mouth. Scraping the tongue and then rinsing out the mouth with either. Um, you can take a little bit of, if you have it, some um, coconut oil, 
teaspoon, swish it around in the mouth, in the mouth, and spit it out, and, that, and then it becomes purified. Or um, you can uh, just rinse your mouth out good. And then, of course, before we begin our cleansing process, it's always recommended to drink warm water in the morning to stimulate evacuation because evacuation in the morning time also helps to rejuvenate the body. Prabhupada mentions that <clears throat> this is the time for evacuation. Um, man, that's the best time when you get up in the morning and what stimulates that is drinking warm water. Personally, um, whatever health I have <laughs> is because of this drinking warm water in the morning. I drink about one liter minimum, no more, actually one liter exactly every day for the last 30 years. I don't think I've missed one day yet. 30 years, I drink one liter after scraping the tongue because if you don't scrape the tongue, then when you drink that those bacteria go into the body, and if they get into the intestines, they can cause problems. Mm -hmm. um, so warm water, some like people like to put a little lemon in the water, like that, and that will also help. And then um, evacuation, the brushing one's teeth, and then whatever else is necessary to take the bath. Now, many of us live at home and some of us don't have a morning program. Uh, some of us do have morning programs and that's good. For those who don't have morning programs, I highly recommend that either during the time you're cleansing yourself to get ready for your chanting, play uh, Srila Prabhupada's Mangal Archi song. Um, this is what I do when I don't have a chance to go to the temple. I listen to Srila Prabhupada singing the Mangal Archi song. And then after uh, getting your hygiene in order, proper evacuation, cleansing. Now back to this thing, a early morning bath. Some of you might be a little bit Take it aback where it says cold bath. <clears throat> what that might uh, interpret to is what I understand is that uh, you can take a warm shower, but you should finish with cold water and give yourself a good rinsing with the cold water and that will rejuvenize the body. And as it was mentioned in this reading from the Pancharatriki Pradipa, gives strength, sensitivity, longevity, effulgence, and purity, and it wakes you up. <laughs> I know one, I have one disciple who lives in Mayapur, and throughout the year, doesn't matter what the weather is, <laughs> she takes a straight cold bath. Uh, she's very austere, <laughs> and uh, <clears throat> but uh, if it's too difficult for you, either for health reasons or otherwise, you may use a warm water for washing, but try to give yourself at least um, maybe a half a minute, maybe at least 20 seconds of nice cold water coming down, but don't put cold water on your head. That is not recommended. It's not good for the brain. It's not good for the mind. Keep Always put cool water on your head, not cold. And don't put hot water on your head either. Hot water and cold water are not good. And uh, use cool water for the head, but cold water for the body. And uh, <clears throat> You might find it a little bit of a shock at the first, but once you get used to it, you can't wait for it. It's actually becomes very nice. <laughs> so, 
So here, this is corroborated in the Shastras here, the benefits of a cold bath. Uh, after that, um, prepare yourself, put on a clean set of clothes. Before then, put on Gopi Chandan on the 12 parts of the body, uh, the forehead, and then the stomach, chest, <clears throat> throat, right side, uh, right arm, the upper part of the right arm in two places, then go to the other side, the left side of the body. And uh, <clears throat> one minute, I got an emergency here, hold on. Okay, after, after the left side of the body, then the upper left arm, above the elbow, two places, and then at the very top of the, uh, the back, and just at the next, where the neck and the back meet, and then the last one is in the lower black back, and then, then whatever's left on your hands, you rub it on your head on the last part, and then there's particular mantras that you you should chant accordingly. So putting on Gopi Chandan is a great ritual. So Gopi Chandan should not be done in the bathroom. It should not be done in an area where it's contaminated and should always be kept in a clean place. Gopi Chandan is supposed is explained to be the tears of the gopis. <clears throat> Um, you can find this sacred clay in places like Dwarka in India and a few other places. It's not easy to come about. It's um, very soft, 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 smooth clay mixed with Ganga water and applied according to the application recommended along with chanting the mantras. Before you get dressed, you make sure your tilak or your gopi chandan is dried so it doesn't get on your clothes. Then uh, <clears throat> get yourself prepared with clean clothes. And then uh, some of you may have deities. You might want to wake up your deities at that time. Others will be begin their chanting of the Hare Krishna Maha Mantra. Find yourself a place that is uh, free from any distractions. Focus on uh, posture, sit correctly with back straight. You may sit in the chair or you may uh, sit on the floor in a cross-legged position and the back should be straight and then begin carefully chanting the Hare Krishna mantra, very slowly at the beginning, making sure you hear each and every syllable. And gradually, as the concentration on the sound becomes steady, and you, you'll find yourself able to naturally increase the speed without losing the uh, contact with the sound vibration. If you a little too fast or too slow at the beginning, you may find it difficult to uh, keep attention. And also pray to Krishna for his mercy. There are re recommended prayers that we recite before chanting Japa. Um, 
this came up in one of our previous discussions and I sent a listing of those prayers to, I believe, Mother Lavanya and maybe to other devotees to make it available for everyone. Those prayers are available now. But there any, if you have your own personal prayers, you may also recite those. Um, you can recite those prayers also. And uh, there are also prayers from the scriptures that you may add, like Hare Nama, Hare Nama, Hare Nama, Eva Keva Lom, Kalon Naste, Eva Naste, Eva Gati Anyuta. That is a standard prayer glorifying the exclusive position of the chanting of the Holy Name above each and every other form of spiritual worship. Okay, then um, if you can do it according to time, if you have the time, try to chant as many rounds as you can before you change into another activity. Um, I suggest you chant 16 rounds first if, you, if your time is not conflicted with other things. But if you can arrange your schedule in such a way where you chant 16 rounds before you begin, any other activity, you'll find a noticeable difference in your consciousness and in how things go throughout the day, <clears throat> especially in your consciousness. There was one uh, devotee, <clears throat> And he had two sons who were also devotees. And uh, he was a devotee and he was chanting 16 rounds a day. But he wasn't chanting 16 rounds early. He was chanting it throughout the day whenever he found time. But one of the characteristics of this devotee is that he would get angry quite easily. So his sons, who were both devotees, they thought, what can we do to help our father get over this anger streak? So they suggested and they explained the importance of chanting early and chanting all 16, or 16 rounds. So he became curious and he thought, maybe I should try that. Maybe it helped me get over this anger. And... Lo and behold, after a few weeks of chanting 16 rounds, first thing, um, that tendency for anger was gone. <laughs> so uh, <clears throat> uh, this is just a small example of how the holy name works in such a way as to purify us from the anarthas on all levels. So if you can do it, I would recommend it. And uh, those of you who are at home and you have families come together with the family, have Mongol Arti together. If you like to do Guru Puja, if you have time for other things, uh, make a morning program. The morning program is a foundation for the whole spiritual development. It's called sadhana. Everything is based on sadhana in terms of our spiritual advancement, the quality of our sadhana, the enthusiasm by which we undertake our sadhana, all are instrumental in helping to bring about a uh, stronger mind. When the mind is strong, the mind becomes strong by chanting Hare Krishna. When the mind is strong, then it becomes natural to think of Krishna. It becomes natural not to get disturbed so much by what goes on around you. It becomes more easy to remember what you have to remember. It becomes clear on how to act in each and every situation throughout the day. The holy name is all beneficial on all levels. Because it's not only does it energize the soul, but it connects us with Krishna. So that means the more we chant early and keep that chanting going throughout the day, if we can, 
As it's mentioned, Prabhupada said, 16 rounds on beads, innumerable rounds off the beads. That means you can chant anytime, any place, anywhere. These are not, these do, doesn't necessarily, you have to count these. Of course, it's required that we keep a numerical counting of our japa. But after that, we can chant anytime and just remember Krishna by chanting his holy name. It's the easiest and most direct way to remember Krishna. When you're with Krishna, you're not with the material energy. Um, after we, well, we should also spend some time in the morning prior to breakfast to hear Srimad Bhagavatam. I know many of you will come on the line for this class and it's, it's early morning for you. Well, this is usually your class, but sometimes I don't speak Bhagavatam. I speak something else like today. So one should take time and make sure you get a daily dose of at least one verse and purport of Srimad Bhagavatam. And uh, if you can do more, that's nice. Um, one devotee decided to make an experiment to see how many pages he should read per day of the Bhagavatam in order to complete the Bhagavatam in one year. And he came up with 41 pages. So um, that's a nice vow, try to complete reading the Bhagavatam in one year, read 41 pages a day. Out of all the scriptures, Bhagavatam is the highest. Bhagavatam is the best. Chaitanya mm -hmm. Charitamrita is right there with Bhagavatam. So when we say Bhagavatam, we also mean Chaitanya Charitamrita because Chaitanya Charitamrita is living Bhagavatam. Okay, then uh, the next thing you do, you may do other things in between, but take breakfast. I was asked the question yesterday, when is the best time to take our breakfast? And I got this from an Ayurvedic doctor directly I, upon request. And he told me 7.30 to 8.30 is the best time for taking breakfast. It's not too early, it's not too late. So in other words, we should finish by 8.30, the latest for breakfast every day. And breakfast should be a light meal. It's not a heavy meal. If you eat a big breakfast, you might find it very difficult to uh, do things throughout the day. Digestion is most, uh, the fire of digestion is the strongest uh, when the sun is in the highest position within the meridian. Now that's recommended that we uh, take our larger meal at noontime or, and of course the question also came, when is the best time for having lunch? Well, some of us have schedules and we have to do our work or do whatever else we're doing, but <clears throat> the ideal time for lunch is between 12.30 and 1.30. That is the best time. And evening meal between six and seven or within that range. Uh, no later than 7.30 because if it gets too late, then uh, digestion slows down. And if we have to take rest and we're not fully digested, then that will cause us to get less benefit from the sleep because the body has to work while we're trying to slow it down, it's still working for digestion. So, of course, people have different uh, powers of digestion. As you get older, you need to take digestive aids to help inspire the fire of digestion to stay alive because digestion is the basic principle of health. 
If the digestion is working good, generally the health is good. <laughs> and vice versa, like that. Okay, now have we finished our breakfast, then we go on with our daily activities, but we should try to remember Krishna throughout the day. <clears throat> Get away from the idea that Krishna is in the morning and maybe Krishna is again in the evening and the in between is just for me. <laughs> That's not Krishna consciousness. Krishna consciousness means to somehow or other connect with Krishna 24 hours a day. In other words, stay connected with the spiritual energy. <clears throat> As we perform our daily duties, whether we go to work or whether we um, are living at home, you try keep yourself connected to the spiritual energy through various process, through various means, chanting, reading, remembering, hearing lectures, discussing different things you can do to keep that energy. Because we're, trying, we're preparing our consciousness to go back home, back to Godhead. And consciousness, as it unfolds, if we continually steadily give it the spiritual nourishment, then it'll move in that direction. We give it some spiritual nourishment, we give it some Maya nourishment. <clears throat> then we always are struggling in order to remember Krishna. Okay, and of course, in the evening again, after we finish our daily activities, it's recommended for those who live in the household to come together with the family members and again, maybe have a little kirtan, read from Bhagavad Gita, like that, finish out the day in a very spiritual atmosphere, spiritual consciousness like that. Prabhupada writes that by doing that, then we may at night uh, dream about Krishna or dream about something spiritual. Those of you who are brought up in India, who are very tuned with the tradition of India, know that in the villages, the village people would get together as a group in the evening time, and someone would come with either the Ramayan, Mahabharat, or maybe even Srimad Bhagavatam, and in the evening they would, someone would read, Sometimes they would discuss, but generally it was someone reading and everyone was listening. And then this would be the last activity and then everyone would take rest after that. <clears throat> it's always good to take rest in a proper consciousness, not like, well, you just fall into the sleep pattern because your mind is so exhausted. No, <clears throat> give some energy to spiritual energy to the mind before you go. That way, rest will be less disturbed and more peaceful. <clears throat> and you may also dream of Krishna <laughs> or something related to Krishna, something Krishna conscious. <clears throat> so these are the little things <clears throat> we can do. I just mentioned a few things. There's so much more that could be considered in this day-to-day -day regiment of our life in Krishna consciousness. Okay, so I'll stop here and see if there's any comments or questions. Thank you, Guru Maharaj, for such a detailed explanation of this routine and how we should really live our lifestyle. Like, don't find such details normally in various lectures. So thank you very, very much. I'm sure it will be very useful for uh, every devotee here and uh, uh, you can take you can take something <laughs> sorry guru maharaj there's something for everybody yes yes guru maharaj and i like i personally like very much big follower of ayurveda so i can understand what you were saying guru maharaj like uh, it's really really that lifestyle with that kind of routine is very very helpful um, so thank you very much. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, Harik, 
Um, only one thing, like Guru Maharaj, I have uh, seen what I have gone through in uh, Ayurveda lectures or Ayurveda like various trainings. Uh, only one difference, but uh, I think since it's working with you, I will take and I will try that. Is that uh, morning water is something without even cleaning our tongue, because uh, what they say that morning saliva is very good because it's very highly highly alkaline, so it's very good for our body. Which is like goes along with the little warm water, but uh, I will try the way you have suggested now, cleaning the tongue first. You mean you mean as opposed to cleaning the tongue? Yes, yes, Guru Maharaj. Yeah, that's what like in a, most of the Ayurveda they say, suggest because morning saliva is highly highly alkaline, which we cannot get in any daytime. So like mm -hmm. I have I've been trying that like from last I would say, fifteen twenty years, uh, the same routine. So that's mm, because I think it's a, some Ayurvedic people differ. Prabhupada says that the germs build up in the mouth, and if you drink anything immediately without cleansing your mouth, those germs go into the system. And that's what Prabhupada, Prabhupada said. That so I'm just repeating what yes, he yes, said. Yes, yes, no, Guru Maharaj, absolutely. I will try to follow that now. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, Hare Krishna, dear devotees. Uh, if you have any questions or any suggestions or any comment, please do unmute yourself. Uh, it's a nice opportunity to discuss that with Guru Maharaj. And if you have any questions which you would like to type in chat window and want me to read out, uh, please go for that. Thank you very much. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna, dear Guru Maharaj. Please 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 my humble obeisance. All glories to Prabhupada, praise to your holiness. My question is about uh, thank you, thank you so much for emphasizing on health and uh, noting down all points and try to incorporate them. At which point should we drink this uh, water? Is it after we clean the tongue and brush our teeth, but before taking a bath or after taking a bath? We the warm water no because the warm water helps for elimination so that's the main one of the main things it also strengthens the the back muscles and um, sometimes we wake up with a sore back or something usually that warm water helps to uh, overcome that no, the first thing you do is you clean your tongue, then you take the warm water, then you prepare, then you take you, then you brush your teeth and go through your bath like that. Because evacuation is recommended at that time, and that rejuvenates the whole body at that time. That's also between cold bath and evacuation, these two are very essential in the early morning hours because they really re re rejuvenate the whole body after sleep. Mm -hmm. So that we clean the tongue, drink warm water, then we tea, and then after evacuation we take a shower like that. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Uh. Hare Krishna, Guru Maharaj. There is one question from Roberto Prabhu in Ooh. chat. Roberto Prabhu. Okay. And he's saying, Hare Krishna, Gurudev, please accept my humble obeisances. All glories to Shri uh, can you turn up your volume slightly? Mm -hmm. Volume down, Guru Maharaj, yeah? The volume is very low. <laughs> oh, okay. Is this better, Guru Maharaj? It's scratchy now. <laughs> oh, okay. But Roberto just said, "Yeah, he just answered." Yeah. So, okay. Yeah. Thank you, Guru Maharaj. Uh, I don't keep notes on these things. No. <laughs> Uh, 
but I have some notes that are referred to health, but not particularly what I what I spoke this morning. <laughs> If you want to know about something specific, just let me know about that specific thing and I'll t I can refer to something. Hare Krishna, dear devotees, uh, is there any questions or any comment? <laughs> I guess this is a subject that people are not, not so uh, interested in. I guess. I okay, think this I is the subject of Guru Maharaj. This is very, very, very critical and very <laughs> useful for everybody. Uh, Sudha Mataji has raised his ha uh, her hand. Um, oh, with... Yes, yes, yes. I can see. Sudha Mataji, okay. please. Yeah. Yeah, thank you, Prabhuji. Uh, Hare Krishna. Um, Dhanavad Pranam, Guru Maharaj. Um, please act with my respectful obeisances. Uh, Maharaj, uh, you mentioned like early morning uh, uh, shower. So could you tell me, Maharaj, like exactly like what time you um, suggest? Like... Uh, it's like around Brahma Mutha time, or is it like five, or like is that okay? Well, it's recommended to get up at least an hour and a half before sunrise. One should not rise later than an hour and a half before sunrise. But I recommend getting up earlier. We were trained when we were in the temple to wake up at three thirty. So I still wake up at that time now. And actually, I, I wake up at three now. Um, so it's good to get up early. The, the atmosphere is very peaceful. And it, you can start your morning japa by four o'clock. Or if you do a Mongol Arti or whatever, it's nice. That's the time for worship in the morning. But for rising, no later, no later than one and a half hours before sunrise. So if sunrise is at six, I mean one should wake up at four thirty. Sunrise is at no later than four thirty. Doesn't mean the latest, but no later. So you have to see. Uh, we were speaking about. Um, the importance of taking rest no later than 10 o'clock. If you take rest no later than 10, you'll sleep generally pretty good. Thank you, Maharaj. I think um, uh, today's uh, routines, um, definitely, I mean, I can try to practice. I think I have like uh, some sleep problems, Maharaj. I cannot sleep well. So um, that actually um, um, doesn't allow me to get up uh, morning. I have uh, those issues, but uh, I think today's class, uh, it will really be um, helpful to me. I will definitely try to practice uh, these things, Maharaj, uh, so. I can, I can send you some information that might help you with your uh, overcoming some of these sleep problems. You can go through it and see what may work for you. You can also get advice from others. Um, the best thing to do is make sure that you uh, don't perform any very strong activities before you sleep. You should, should be away from the com computer at least two hours before you rest. Um, there's other things too. Of course, people have different reasons why they have, they struggle with that. 
Usually we have an overactive mind. Uh, the mind is overly active for whatever reason. It doesn't slow down even when we want to rest. But I'll send you something and then you can uh, look through it and just see what you like. Um, I'll just need some place to send it. I can send it to the general body of devotees or I can send it to you directly, either one. Uh, uh, yes, Maharaj, maybe uh, Lavanya Mataji, um, uh, she included me um, um, in this. Okay, uh, I'll send it to Lavanya, yeah. Thank you, Maharaj, thank you so much. I think mostly like I feel like an overactive mind, I think a lot uh, probably that is causing I feel mm, so. Yeah, you can try chanting japa before you take rest. But I can tell you one way you can really go to sleep is you you find a book you can't understand at all. You like pick up the Vedas that are so difficult to read and start reading that before you go to sleep and then you'll fall asleep. <laughs> if you read a very difficult book to understand just before you rest, it's good, a good way to go to sleep. Oh, okay, okay, Mother. So any difficult topic you suggest to read? Um, Something you can't understand. <laughs> Just like some of the Vedic literatures are so steeped in philosophical principles that when you try to read them, you can read the Sandarbhas by Jiva Goswami. That, they're a little difficult to read. Sure, Maharaj, definitely. Yeah, thank you. Brahma Samhita, no, no. Well, yeah, Bhakti Siddhanta's purports in Brahma Samhita is okay, yeah. But not the verses, the purports. Hare Krishna Guru Maharaj, um, please accept my humble obeisances. All goes to Shil Prabhupada and all goes to your help, yourself. Uh, Guru Maharaj, um, thank you so much for the class. Um, even I was looking, I was. Uh, um, Thinking of asking you any notes uh, uh, to send uh, to send uh, to us uh, in this regard of uh, daily routine. Um, thank you so much, uh, Guru Maharaj. And uh, I just want to introduce uh, Sudha Mataji. Uh, she is from Charlotte, uh, and uh, she is a neighbor of uh, Abhiram Saka Prabhu and Shamagori Mataji. She goes to uh, their Bhakti Vriksha, and she is a very nice devotee, practicing Krishna consciousness and. Uh, uh, she likes your classes and she join, joins daily classes now, Guru Maharaj. Well, thank you. Well, yeah, thank you for joining us. We're honored to have your presence. Thank you, Maharaj. The, yeah, I'll, um, yeah, you have a nice association in Charlotte. Uh, yes, Maharaj. I mean, being like three or four years, I've uh, been uh, with uh, Mm -hmm. uh, here in Charlotte, I've uh, been attending uh, <clears throat> Shamagauri Mataji's and Lalitani Mataji's uh, Bhakti Rikshas. Yeah. The wonderful family. Yeah, I got the opportunity to meet you also, Maharaj. Uh, like, I think I met you like four times. <laughs> yeah, so uh, thank you. Okay. I hope to someday visit Charlotte again. <laughs> yes, yes, we are looking forward to it, Maharaj. Thank you. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Thank you, Thank you so much, Maharaj. I can see a hand raised by Dipti Mataji. Dipti Mataji, you can go ahead, please. Thank you. Hare Krishna Guru Maharaj, please accept my humble obeisances. All glories to Srila Prabhupada and all glories to your lotus feet. Thank you for the lovely class. I just have one question, Guru Maharaj. You said when you get up, put your right foot first. Is there any particular reason we use right foot? It's just mentioned in some part of the Shastras. Shastra covers everything. Uh -huh. And so it mentions, yeah, when you get up, put your foot, right foot first on the ground. Hmm, interesting, because, uh, you know, uh, even after marriage, when we enter oh, first time in the house, they say, put your right foot in first. So there must be some reason about right foot, isn't it? Like some more species. There's something there. Yeah, I got it from one very elevated sannyasi. 
Mm -hmm. uh, Banu Swami in one of his lectures, he, mm -hmm. he, he mentioned that. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Thank you, Guru Maharaj. Hare Krishna. You know, there's a lot of subtle energies that devotees, the people don't know about. And there's these subtle energies are so, so always working. If we're in contact and we're in tune with the subtle energies, we can overcome any, we can find things become so easy and so smooth. Usually we're at a, we're in contact contradiction with the energies <clears throat> the cell energies are so much there's so many things that go on that we don't even see mm. you know there's a whole book of omens i don't know if you've seen that no yeah it's uh, if you get if you get a quivering in your left side of your cheek at a that means something very bad is about to happen. Mm -hmm. And then for men, it's one side, for women, it's another side. I had one lady, I, she told me she was, she was just going to work and she get this quiver on the left side of her cheek. Now she didn't pay attention to it, got into her car. She just drove down the road and found, up, found herself driving onto the lawn of one of her neighbors. <laughs> She said, oh, I, yes. can't, I, can't I can't even figure out how I did it. I just, all of a sudden, I was on my neighbor's lawn, off the, off the road, off the sidewalk. The car, you know, the car, she had an accident. Somehow, some, she either lost control or something. But she didn't pay attention to that omen. You know. Mm. There's a lot of omens that tell you something's going to happen, either good, bad, or something in between, depending on the omens. But but in that case, what do you do, Guru Maharaj? Because if you Chant have to Hare do stuff... <laughs> <laughs> that is so true. That is so true. <laughs> it's all you can do, and that's the that's the best remedy for everything. <laughs> Yeah, thank you. <laughs> because if you have to go for an interview, you have to go. <laughs> you can't stop it. Yes, Jan Hare Krishna. That, that, that's the solution for everything. <laughs> <laughs> Spiritual material and in between. <laughs> true, true. <laughs> thank you, Guru Maharaj. Hare Krishna. Hare, Hare, Hare Krishna. Uh, Please, I have one more question, which has been quite vexing for quite a while for me. I know that uh, part of health is keeping everything very neat and very clean, and regular uh, meals on time, cooking. Uh, Sri Devi, are you, Devi, you're still in North Carolina? No, Guru Maharaj, I'm back in New Orleans. Really, usually you have good internet, but it keeps breaking up now. It's been happening a few times. Would you put I write in the chat? I, um, yeah, you can try speaking again, but try speaking real slow and let's see if I can pick it up. Sometimes it comes on, sometimes it breaks up. Okay, I will again try again my question is i know that cleanliness keeping everything neat and clean having meals cooking good consciousness all these things are also very important for health but i somehow uh, i don't know maybe I have a defective gene or something. I have a very hard time taking any interest in this part, these activities. I am ready to run out, distribute books, do this, that. But cooking and cleaning, oh my goodness. It is such a challenge for me to just do something simple like keeping a home neat and clean and cooking nice things or Krishna. Yeah, well, you're a preacher, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 
if you were to tell me that you couldn't do it and because you wanted to watch television, then I would say something else. But since you want to go out and preach, then there's no problem. <laughs> Uh, yeah, so I, it's best, you know, then simplify your life so you don't have to do much of it. Sir, it's to uh, live very minimalistic, not have too many things, and just keep it very simple. You heard of spring cleaning, right? Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> That's when you throw things out. You don't. It's been sitting in your closet for the last three lifetimes. Yes, Guru Maharaj, I have a lot of spring cleaning to do. You have a lot of homeless people in your area there too. Right. They're always eager to get some new clothes. <laughs> Yes, Guru Maharaj, I will try to give away a lot of stuff so I don't have to worry about maintaining much. Yeah, I just did some this morning. Some shuffling things around, getting rid of things. It's fun. Please give me some Shakti, Guru Maharaj. Please bless me because I'm very weak in this area. I don't know how to do it. Well, get a roommate and let them do it. <laughs> no, maybe that's that not good. Sounds like a plan. <laughs> maybe that's not good. I don't know. I don't know. Just keep it simple. Cook once a day. Or else you can cook one time and then you can have enough lunch for the next two or three days. Just refrigerate it and reheat it up. It's not the best, but it'll save you a lot of time in cooking. Yes, Maharaj, I do that. I cook once and then I just have it again and again to three Yes. Good. Thank you. Okay, so, Vivek, we can stop here. Yes, Guru Maharaj, we are 10 minutes now over or 11 minutes over now. Um, okay. I can see one message from Dharma Prabhu. No, just, no, no, it's just a thank you message, sorry. Yeah, yeah that's all. Okay, thank you. So, so thank you, thank you very much, Guru Maharaj, for really, really nice class. I really personally liked it and loved it. And thanks, devotee, for joining this session. Shila Prabhupada ki jai, Gurudev ki jai, Anand Koti Vrind ki jai. Okay, I'm gonna Lavani, I'll send you these things on on sleep. Thank you, Maharaj Haribol. <laughs>